Hello everyone, this is Randall from System Gold and I'm here with Adobe After Effects CC 2015 and I'm going to take you through a project from uh, just a basic setting up of the video and rendering it or exporting it. So uh, the first thing I want to do though is um, I'm going to import my video which I know already has some black around the outside edges so I want to remove that so I want to show you how to do that first. Okay, so I'm going to drag this over to the stage here, and you can see the black around the edges. Uh, so to do that, uh, you want to use the region of interest, which is basically cropping it, and you would crop it the same way you would crop anything. You want to get as close to it without cutting deep into it. Okay, that looks good. And then you go to composition and crop comp to region of interest, which makes sense. We want to crop the region of interest. And there we go. So you move it. And it's still there. But that's okay. Because you're cropping the whole screen so you could only see this. Now we have to render it. So that was the problem I, f I ran into before. I had all my background and everything else and I just wanted to crop this one layer but you can't just crop the one layer because you're cropping the entire thing so now the next thing I do have to do is render it so you go to composition add to render queue I usually leave best settings the way it is and I click the second one here and I change AVI to QuickTime and then I change the format options to you could either put H.264 or you could put MPEG4. Those are the two that would work. So let's try this. Sometimes I have problems with the MPEG4 for some reason. Okay and okay and then you just click render. Um, to save time I'm not going to render it. I'm going to uh, just X out of this because I already rendered it before. And I'm going to open up After Effects again. Knowing that it was already rendered. I don't want to have you sit here and, um, and watch me render it. Because that may take a few minutes. Okay, so now I'm going to import my files. The best thing to do is import multiple files. This is great. I know I want a TV, living room. It automatically keeps asking you until you say done. And then the last one was the Mr. Purple crop test two. And now I'm done. Okay, so here's the living room. Well, I guess they were all highlighted. They're all out there now. This is the video, this is the background, and this is the TV. So what I do usually is I grab a corner. You have to grab the corner and start pulling it first, and then you can hold down shift then you can maintain its attributes and you get it pretty big I usually go to the corner and move it all the way up and over and then I click this which enables you to to reroute this thing so if I put it all the way over to here it keeps this side stable and then I could bring this drag this over but I have to click this tool first the arrow so I grab this and I bring it all the way over a little bit past. I click this again and I move this over here. It keeps the top in place. I click the arrow and then I can just drag it down. Okay. 
Second thing I want to do is figure out the size of the TV, how big I want the TV. This is actually a pretty good size. I could leave it like that. It's a little big. Um, and again, if I want to make it a little smaller, you grab the corner and you start dragging it. And it doesn't maintain the attributes when you do that. But then you just quickly grab the, the shift key and then you could continue to adjust it. I'm not sure why it does that. So this looks good, like a good size. Um, the TV is the top one. The living room is the bottom one. So you click this and you just drag it down. Or you could you know, could have clicked the other one and dragged that one up. Okay, so now we're on this. And we're going to do the same thing. You grab the corner. You click on the corner and start dragging it. Then you hold down the shift to maintain its attributes. I made it a little bit too small. And the reason I cut those black corners out is because they were hanging out here on either side, mostly on this side. Okay. So now I want to zoom in on all three. And to do that, you want to pick one thing to use as something that controls the size and everything, which in this case is going to be the TV. So that means the other two items have to look at the TV as the parent. So you go over here, this is the video, the TV is the parent, and this is the living room, and the TV is the parent. So I click on the TV and I press S for scale, hold down the shift key and press P for position. I click on the next one, S for scale, hold on shift, P for position. Click on the last one, S for scale, hold on shift, P for position. And then I click on all of them to make them all active on the first, right at the beginning here. Now I'm going to go right all the way to the end. And I'm going to grab onto the TV. Because if you move the TV, everything moves exactly equal to it. So I'm going to change mostly the scale, but the position might be a little bit different too. That's why I put position in there as well. So I'm going to start, I'm going to grab the corner and I'm going to start pulling it and then I'm going to hold down the shift to maintain its attributes. Then I'm going to bring that TV all the way in here. And that looks pretty good, right in the center. Okay, so now that that's done, we can render it. So to render it, you want to go to Composition, Add Render Queue, Best Settings, I just leave it as it is, um, Output to, let's call it uh, Mr. Purple TV Zoom Final. And this it's only giving you AVI as an option there. But I'm going to put MP4. Now oh, it's still made it uh, AVI. Okay, so then I'm going to click this and change the AVI to QuickTime. And then I'm going to change this to MPEG. You could also change, if you're having... I sometimes have difficulty with the MPEG where it just doesn't render as an MPEG for some reason. Um, but the next best thing is H.264. And that's like the equivalent of MPEG, but that's the .mov. So we're going to try the MPEG and see what happens. Click OK on that, OK on that, and then click Render. And then you can watch the video as it renders. Now, it doesn't take that long, but it takes a couple minutes. But you could see how I didn't want you to have to watch the render of the first video that I uh, changed up on us, that I rendered. So you're already watching the main render here. Yeah, last time I did this, the MPEG came out as an MOV for some reason. It was really weird. 
I probably have to restart the computer and restart the program and try it again. It would and it would work. Um, hopefully it'll work this time. Although it's saying output to dot mov. So let's see what happens. Mov is fine for me, um, but it really shouldn't go to mov if you have it set for the MPEG. But it has rendered before correctly in the MPEG. So let's see what happens in this one. And that's about it. Um, I'm going to post a link to this video so you can see it, um, how it's supposed to work. But I showed you a few different things that you can do. It's quick and easy. This TV was a PNG file with this center part cut out. The PNG is different than JPEG because it you can leave no background and that's great for moments like this where you want this cut out so you can put something behind it that's perfect okay so this is almost done and I just want to find out what the what kind of file was produced And it looks like it came out as a quick time movie. Dot MOV. So, uh, I mean, I could still use that. It's kind of annoying that it did that. Um, but I'm going to restart everything and try it again. But that's how you do it. So, um, and if you click that other option, which was the, um, I don't remember it now, but I said it earlier, that will definitely bring you to the MOV. So, um, if you're okay with MOV, then you're all set. And, uh, please, if you like this, you know, subscribe, like it, put your comments. If you want more information or you want clarification on something, let me know. And of course, there's going to be a link to the actual video that I just created. Thank you very much.